The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the webinar, Magnesium, the Miracle Mineral Everybody Needs This Spring. I would like to thank Natural Vitality for hosting this webinar, and Ashley Coffardi for being our speaker today. There will be a Q&A at the end of the webinar, so please send me any questions you might have via the chat box. If you would like to view the webinar again or have a link uh, to use, it will be on Ashley's YouTube channel early next week. Right, over to you, Ashley. Thank you, Matt, and welcome, everyone. I love talking about magnesium. It was a game-changing mineral for my own personal health, uh, and it's one that I think we can all enjoy getting in more of and certainly enjoy the benefits. Um, so we are going to be talking for about a half hour today, and this is really designed to answer your questions. So I know we have store owners on here. We have healthcare practitioners. We have uh, some of my patients are joining us. So uh, feel free to ask your questions and I will address them. Um, and if you don't have time to stay on while I'm addressing the questions, as Matt said, you can listen afterwards. So with that said, let's get to it. Um, so what you see here is magnesium, you know, as it appears, uh, our MG, um, as it appears on the chemical list. And basically what we want to focus on is this mineral that is found in so many amazing foods we're just not getting enough of. And so what I wanna walk you through today is why is that? Um, and also within that, what can we be doing to get more of it? Why do we need it? Um, and then some really helpful resources, both ones that I've created, as well as an amazing organization, the Nutritional Magnesium Association, which has research and a lot of tools. I often refer the media there. And then from Natural Vitality, it's not really to go into their products, but really to understand all the different ways that we can interact with supplemental magnesium and what's better in the magnesium, in the supplemental magnesium space. So this is me. If we haven't met before, I get to do a lot of things. Um, probably some of my favorites are the fly fishing that you see in there and getting to spend time with my dog. Uh, but my real goal is to not just tell you what better nutrition is or isn't, but really help you be able to make it happen in your daily life. So with that, let's talk about it within our daily lives, what is better health? We all want better health. And so the way that we get it is by giving our body the nutrients that it needs. That's what better nutrition is. It's giving the body the nutrients it needs, the resources that it needs to run better. And that begins with at the cellular level, what our bodies need. And if we look at you know the cells on from an, an overall standpoint on the earth, our cells need magnesium in order to be able to grow, to convert the food we eat into actual energy. That's really important so it isn't getting converted into fat storage, as well as to change the proteins, those amino acids that we eat into our own personal enzymes. And enzymes are so important because they're going in there and doing that work that will help direct. They're like communication tools that help direct cells, bones, and muscle. And in particular, like when we're thinking of muscles, our heart muscle and our digestive muscle. So we'll be talking about why magnesium specifically is so important for people who are experiencing any challenges or risk of disease in those spaces, as well as for the living processes that go on constantly and continually, like things like as simple as blood vessels expanding and contracting. We never pay attention to the fact that throughout the day, we have millions, we might even have billions, I don't know, but I know we have millions of blood vessels and they need to expand and contract just like our heart does. And that contraction is a dance between uh, calcium and between magnesium that I'm going to talk a little bit more about. Okay, so let's go through a refresher. Uh, if you've been on any other webinar with me, you have heard this before. Really, if you've probably interacted with me in any space because I'm so passionate about magnesium, and here is why. At the cellular level, which I was just talking about, magnesium is there to turn off stress. That's right. In reality, stress is actually not the problem that we put it, that we, when people say like stress, it's the problem, it's the health problem. It's actually the failure to turn off stress sufficiently that is a problem. So we really want to focus on that part. We also know that we want our muscles to contract, but we equally need them to relax. And whether that's the digestive muscle, whether that's our heart muscle, whether that's things like if you're flexing a bicep, you also need to relax that bicep, you know, so that relaxation is going to be so important and here's one that is not there's not enough attention paid to it actually helps to build healthy bone 
I like to describe calcium as a mineral as a little bit of a renegade student. So you know when you're on a field trip, you've got kids out on a field trip, whether they're at a museum or at the zoo, and there's always one kid. He's not causing trouble, but he's just, of course I said he, right? Because I think about one of my brothers, but he's off there in the direction, you know, just kind of going and doing his own thing. And that's what calcium can be. And so what magnesium and other nutrients do is they bring him back and say, hey, this is where we're all going and this is where we're supposed to go. And that's so important. So magnesium is critical to not just building healthy bone when we're young, but we actually should always be building healthy bone. And in particular, as we're aging, it's so critical to maintain that healthy bone. Another thing that we need to maintain are healthy blood sugar levels. And so when we think about healthy blood sugar levels, of course, we probably go right in our brains to diabetes. But what we want to think about is avoiding too much sugar in our blood at one time is like avoiding being in traffic. It really allows the body the ability to reduce that irritation that happens when we just, when we think we're going to be able to get from point A to point B easily, but instead we hit a bunch of traffic. And so, yes, it is certainly a factor with diabetes, but it's really about our body being able to do its work better, to work more efficiently and effectively by supporting healthy blood sugar levels. Also promote, promoting heart health. I was talking about muscles, and I, we really want to identify one of the key muscles as heart health, as the heart muscle, and then also digestion. A lot of people forget that the digestive tract is actually an entire series of muscles, and that the only way that our digestive tract functions, moves things along, is actually through those contractions and a contraction is not just the squeezing it's the relaxation and that's where your magnesium comes in and then of course in doing this as well as things like supporting the lining of the the mucosal layer the lining of the digestive tract we're helping to build a healthy immune system so that's going to be critical as well so some of the symptoms of magnesium deficiency are things like stress and the result from stress that anxiety uh, um, and really the tension, the nervousness, irritability, fatigue and low energy or other symptoms and inability to sleep as well. It might be that you're anxious and nervous and awake, or it might be that you're like, okay, I sh I'm lying in bed, but I actually just can't fall asleep. There's that we're missing a trigger there in order to fall asleep. Um, I talked before about muscles, muscle tension, spasm, cramps that can be related to, uh, you know, sitting during the day that can be related to physical activity. It can be re related to hormonal things. Um, you know, so we, I've noted over here also PMS and hormonal balances. And it also plays out, remember, in that digestive tract where it can be related to constipation and just not feeling like we're, and also with bloating and cramps and constipation, a lot of times that all comes together under something we call irritable bowel syndrome. Uh, so really important in that space. Headaches are another type of cramp and tension. And then also weakness, generally feeling like we're not getting the muscular support, that engagement. Um, uh, the bone piece we've talked about, abnormal heart rhythms, and then also calcification of organs. Remember I was talking to you about that, you know, that renegade, how calcium can kind of go off and do its own thing. Well, one of the things it goes off and does is it can actually become the arterial plaque. It can also become the, um, and that calcification can occur in your kidneys or in your bladder in terms of stones. And so it's really important for us to make sure that we have adequate magnesium to be directing calcium where it's supposed to go. So I want everyone to take this quiz. I'm curious, uh, you can type in your answer if you want, or you can just think about it to yourself. Um, but I will tell you this, I will overtly tell you that a great percentage of our population today is not meeting what we call the RDA, the recommended daily allowance. And in this way, I'm also turning, terming it the minimal minimum daily requirement for magnesium. And why would that be the minimum? Why would our recommend daily allowance be the minimum? Because that RDA is actually based on looking at statistics over and population statistics over the decades for what can help us, can provide the body to avoid diseases of deficiency. So we're not even talking about meeting our needs for of magnesium for optimal health or for what I call better health. So the question mark is, are, is it 60% of men and 50% of women, which is A? Is it B, 75% of men and women? Are, are we equally not getting in enough? Or is it C, 80% of men and 70% of women? So as I said, you can type in your answer if you want to help be held accountable, um, or you can also uh, just um, uh, be thinking about it for a moment. 
So when I looked at this question, I will tell you as a dietitian who's been working for about 20 years and has studied all the research on magnesium and our uh, magnesium intake, it gave me a moment of pause. And then I remembered one of the um, uh, researchers that I interviewed just saying this is one instance where men are doing slightly worse than women. So I will tell you that the answer is technically C, but if you answered B, you're right in the right zone. And you know what, if you answered A, you're still in the same place. Um, in terms of us understanding that a significant portion of Americans, as much as 80% of men and 70% of women are not meeting that minimum amount that we need. And remember, just to go back for a second, remember what we were talking about, all the things that it does, right? So I think in that way, it's so important. So why aren't we meeting those? Well, there are a number of different reasons. First and foremost, are, there's food processing. When you take a shaft of wheat and you make it into white flour, it's a reduction of about 70 to 80% of magnesium. Interestingly, a moment ago, I told you that the statistics are 70% of women and 80% of men. So it might be that men are just consuming more white flour. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but it might also be that women are eating more chocolate and that's a little teaser for what's to come next. Um, so food processing is really a factor and that goes hand in hand with the aging, the just the general aging as well as the damage that has happened to our soil. And so whether it's the use of chemicals or whether it's just the, the general aging as I was talking about, we have had a reduction in nutrients across the board in our soil. And so that is making it more challenging to get in that magnesium. The magnesium needs to come from the plants, excuse me, from the soil into the plants, and then that's how we consume it. It's not that we're a sad diet, it's that the standard American diet is a sad one. And one of the pieces of that is the food processing. We are turning to food processing more often. Um, and the second part of it is we aren't getting in many of the foods that uh, provide us more of our overall nutrients, including magnesium. We also have dietary intolerances. I have people all the time that come to see me that are avoiding different food groups. Um, they're also choosing, I'll put dietary intolerances and dietary preferences together. They're also choosing to avoid things. So when you reduce the amount of carbohydrates in your diet, you're reducing the likelihood of getting in magnesium. If you are avoiding, if you're gluten-free and you're getting rid of certain grains, you may be reducing that. If you're, if you're allergic to or avoiding tree nuts, that can also be a factor. So there are a number of reasons that we may be seeing a reduction um, in the uh, of dietary intolerances and preferences are, as a factor for the reduction in magnesium. And then on the flip side, we tend to really enjoy calcium and we've been told not just to enjoy it, but that it is critical for us to get in. We have spent so much, and when I say we, it's we healthcare practitioners, we have spent so much time telling you to get in more and more calcium. And I've got a funny story to tell you. The way it was communicated to me is that we, that somewhere um, a few decades back, there was a French researcher who identified that the, the average uh, French woman, I always like to say, I don't think there's anything average about a French woman, but that's beside the point. The average French woman is not getting in, uh, it, it, or the amount of magnesium that she needs is about, excuse me, the amount of calcium that she needs is about 1200 to 1500 milligrams. And so somehow when that came across the ocean and we translated it, we actually said that that was 12 to 1500 milligrams of supplemental calcium. I'm somebody who has been auditing food journals for the last um, two decades about and paying attention to mine before that and really have noticed, I have virtually never had a problem with somebody getting in sufficient calcium, both from a dietary standpoint, whether they are choosing plant-based sources or whether they're choosing animal sources, as well as you know, adding in um, if they're taking a multi or that piece. And nowhere near, the, the numbers are nowhere near what we're seeing with uh, magnesium. So we tend to be calcium focused, and at the same time, we tend to not be doing the right thing by way of uh, supplemental magnesium. And that is where you know, I think it, there is so much opportunity for us, especially right now, to just get to that level of the RDA, and then for most of us to try to even get a little bit above it so that we're meeting our better health. And one of the main reasons is, I can't tell you the number of products that I look at, and when I say products, I'm very specifically right now talking about dietary supplements that do provide calcium, and then the form of magnesium that they provide is a not as well absorbed form as some of the others that are on the market. And so in that instance, it's going to be a challenge for us to meet our needs because the calcium is well absorbed and then the magnesium isn't well absorbed. And the other thing is, I usually see two to one, three to one, sometimes even four to one as a ratio of calcium 
to magnesium in the dietary supplement. So we're exacerbating, we're making, we're worsening that um, imbalance of calcium to magnesium, uh, you know, from a, a dietary standpoint and a supplement. So what I call a total nutrition standpoint um, at that level. Okay. So when we talk about it, what's the best ratio or in Ashley Kopf language, I like to say the better ratio because there's no such thing as perfect. But I think a really great visual is this one at the top where we think about a light switch. So we want to think about this light switch. I was saying, you know, before with uh, many people, we'll see their calcium and their magnesium are, it might be four or five times the amount of calcium going in to one time the amount of magnesium. And we need to get a better ratio. We really want to think about it as a one-to-one -one because really, when, one, when something switches on like stress and that calcium comes into the cell, we need to be able to turn off that stress by having an adequate magnesium. So we really want to make sure that every cell is, is properly stored with magnesium so that it can uh, manage to turn off that light switch and that the body doesn't have to pick and choose where which light switches stay on and which light switches don't. And one of the reasons we know that Many of the diseases happen today, and certainly many of the conditions that make us feel not our, uh, that we don't feel we have our better health, are from leaving that light switch on for too long. Because what happens when we leave a light on for too long? It burns out, right? The light burns out. And that's what's happening to a lot of us. So we really want to work on that part um, and try to get to a better ratio. So I also want to, because tis the season, it's spring, uh, and I get asked a lot of questions about, you know, what should I really focus on? You know, is there spring cleaning? Should I go on a detox? How can I get flat belly? I've got the, I've got spring holidays. You know, I've got Easter. Um, I've got weddings, graduations. I mentioned I'm trying to put on the bathing suit. I also have things like seasonal allergies. And then there's just all this stress. You know, I've got taxes or I've got finals. And I'm thinking about the fact that it's also there are longer days, which could end up translating for me into shorter nights, especially as I start to make the transition, right? I might not be sleeping as well and staying up a little bit later. And then we also have things like, hey, April's the time where we want to think about our soil and Earth Day and the climate march and all this stuff going on. And so spring is a really, really, really important time to think about not just where your health is today, but how are you going to have better health throughout the summer? And one core place, in my opinion, to start is by looking at magnesium. So how can you do that? Well, I've just talked to you about all of these different reasons that magnesium is so important for you. And yet, I can't tell you, the listener, whoever you are, whether you're the store owner or whether, and as a store owner, you might also be a patient of mine or you might be a consumer. Um, I assume if you're a store owner, you're also a consumer. Or if you're somebody who came on as a, um, as a healthcare practitioner, we know we are also uh, patients and consumers ourselves. So every single one of us needs to do a better job of one key thing. And that is figuring out where we are right now. Today, we need to know, are we in that 70 or 80%, 80% of men, 70% of women who are not meeting our basic magnesium levels? And one of the things that we do by way of evaluation is we go in here and we look at, this is in really fine print, you're not meant to look on here for it, um, but I will read you through, that foods like cashews and almonds and quinoa, and here we go, Cacao, so that means chocolate, you know, one of my favorites. And then a number of the greens, you know, whether I'm getting in spinach or beet greens or just a variety of greens, am I having those? And then the real question is, am I having those every single day? And what is a portion size? And am I having a portion size? And so when we look at that amount, we can say, okay, I, if I'm doing pretty well on my food, I still need, to, I still may need to get in some more supplemental magnesium but I, because you know the soil and some of the other pieces, but if I'm doing well in the food, I've got a better chance, and I'll get into how you can know more than a chance, how you can know specifically if you're getting in it in a minute. But then we wanna add on, what are you taking supplementally? Are you taking a bone supplement? Are you taking a multi right now? Do those have magnesium oxide in them? Do they have magnesium citrate? What form of magnesium do they have in there? And then I also want you to answer a few other questions. This is just a one and a half page evaluation. You, It's a PDF that you click on there. It's, av it's available through my site. And when you answer those questions on there, what you're able to do is it's also gonna ask you questions about your life. Are you hitting the gym? Are you doing CrossFit, it, you know, high intensity training? Are you just getting back to the gym after an injury? Are you injured? Are you stressed? Are you digestively, are things not going the right way? Are things just backed up? Few questions about you, but that's gonna help us understand where you are today as it relates to the magnesium. 
And then when I said, we don't want to leave it to chance, am I getting in enough magnesium on a daily basis? I have a menu and it has seven days worth of each day shows you how you can meet your magnesium needs. Now you don't have to follow this menu and never eat uh, anything other than this menu, but it is a great way to try for one week. Or what you can also do is just pick a couple of the days, um, or you can look at the numbers. So each each uh, eating occasion, each nutrition pit stop shows you how much magnesium. So it can also tell you on that part how much we need. And so you can go through all of that. And plus, they're also delicious. I have a bunch of other tools for you, including other webinars and Facebook Lives and fun things, so you can get more information on magnesium. This is that awesome resource that resource I told you about, the NMA, and it's gonna do things like show you the most recent research and also provide information from doctors like Carol and Dean and just a really great research resource, excuse me. Then I bring you to um, what I take on a daily basis. People ask me how it was that I figured out as soon as I knew I needed more magnesium, where, how did I, what did, what did I choose and what do I recommend to take? And um, in the beginning, I started with tablets. Um, I hadn't met Natural Palm before and they were okay. Um, but I also noticed that at the time I was really dealing with significant digestive challenges. And it takes a lot for your system to break down those, um, a lot of the tablets and capsules that are out there. And I also wasn't getting the um, immediate response. And I also want to be able with my patients today, I want to know they're able to get something that's highly bioavailable, a great form, easily absorbed, and that we can also play around with the dosage. So for all those reasons, I'm a huge fan of Natural Calm or Natural Calm plus calcium if I do need to add in some of the calcium or OsteoCalm. And then also I am loving the newer products, the bath and then also the cream. The transdermal ability so that and what that means is that the, cal the magnesium comes in through the skin, uh, provides me immediate relief um, and is also a great way. I have a lot of, I'm working with um, uh, a sports team of kids, uh, you know, kids, teens, um, and it's been great for them on that part as well. And so there are actually some compiling new products that I'm really excited about. Um, Calm Kids, uh, this is a great, I have been using Calm with Kids for quite some time, but I love that it adds some additional ingredients that are just gonna be great for your kids to get in, especially getting in that vitamin D, which also helps to direct the calcium and some uh, mood supporting um, uh, Bs and, and choline, which can be harder to get. Just in time for spring, because watermelon's the craze, uh, just May through July, you can get the watermelon flavor. And then we have a Calm Full Sleep, which is a different different form of magnesium, the magnesium glycinate, very, very well absorbed. And also some of these nutrients are great. I recommend, you know, working with your healthcare practitioner if you're really having trouble sleeping, but this has been a great tool to help people get off of sleep medications. Um, so that's it. I'm going to turn it back over to Matt um, to see what questions you all have. And if any of you guys have any questions, please send them in so that we can, uh, so I can go get, get about the business of answering them. Thank you, Ashley. Yes, we have uh, we have some questions coming in. Um, we have about six or seven minutes. So um, the first question, I'll get right to it uh, for you, Ashley. I am a store owner and do not have a magnesium section. Where is the best place to put it? Where are consumers going to look? Uh, so that's a gr so that's a great point. So I am also not a store owner, but I am a shopper and someone who takes people through stores, both virtually and in person, for a job. So I can tell you where the consumer really wants to see this. The consumer wants to see it in different places where they're looking for the symptom that they were coming in for. So for example, and this I'm, I'm being a little bit vague because stores tend to operate differently. You know, some put the symptoms and some put the ingredients up. Um, so one of the things, you know, I would certainly expect that uh, in the multi section or in the bone section uh, that you where you have also individual ingredients. I think that's a great place for calm. I think in the travel place, that's a great place for the travel packets. Um, it is one of my favorite travel tools. So I went through that there are some kids products. So definitely I would look at the kids side. I see a lot of people going in for um, help in the joint section, and that's really a place, or joint or aches and pains, that's really a place where I think the cream can do great. Um, you can certainly, if you have a bath section, you could put the calm bath over there. Uh, but I also think that it's a great one um, to be able to include in an area where um, you might have stress and relaxation um, as a, you know, in the, in the supplement area. And then another one I think that would be really, really, it's a great gift to women. Uh, if you have an area for PMS or for hormones or sort of, you know, that area. 
And then I think last time I saw statistics, um, the number one reason people were going into, or, or number one, number two was digestive. And this is, I mean, I turned to magnesium for as a digestive aid and it, that was where it was a personal game changer. And that's where I've seen the greatest different difference for my uh, patients. So I really think it can be there. So I didn't answer you with put one product in one place. I think what you would do better is to strategically put the different products, depending on how much you have the ability to stock in different locations. And that may also guide you with how um, you see people consuming things and give you a sense after a quarter or two quarters, uh, you know, if something isn't moving, then maybe that it doesn't need to be in that area. But that would be my recommendation. Thank you, Ashley. Uh, next question. I get customers talking about the symptoms you mentioned. I recommend they take a magnesium supplement as a solution, but do you recommend people taking as a daily regime? Great. So I don't recommend that they take magnesium as a solution. I want to be really clear about recommendations that I feel that you should be comfortable offering uh, in store, et cetera, um, or even as a practitioner. Our solution is multifaceted. So I have to look at their food, and I have to look at their supplements, and I may need to make changes in their supplements. Very often, I'm actually taking people off calcium and adding in magnesium. When I look specifically at magnesium, of course, the quality, that's why I focus a lot on how highly bioabsorbable and bioavailable the, um, uh, the magnesium citrate in, in Natural Vitality's Calm is. And so there I feel really good about a 200 to a 400. Um, but I also love the idea that in the teaspoon, that they're able to dose in the teaspoon. So if I'm at all concerned about somebody's digestion, I may start them at a lower amount or if we're dealing with something, a really intense constipation or a te intense hormonal issue, I might start them at the two teaspoons and even upwards of that, um, three or four teaspoons. And so as a practitioner, I have a little bit more flexibility. My recommendation for you is that I think you, when you're, if you're in a store situation, you're talking to someone, I would talk to them. I would ask a few questions and say, has a healthcare practitioner recommended this to you? And if not, the things that I'm comfortable talking to you about are, I've learned that magnesium citrate is a highly uh, absorbable, very bioavailable. I also know about this magnesium glycinate if they're coming over, uh, you know, for the sleep um, uh, product. And, you know, talk to them about that part. And then I would say, you know, I would follow the dosage on the package um, unless advised otherwise by your healthcare practitioner. I think that's the scope uh, that I would feel comfortable for somebody who isn't my patient um, and doesn't have a medical license uh, getting a recommendation from. Okay, uh, next question. There are a few variations of magnesium available. Which one do you recommend? Yeah, so, you know, it's interesting. People have been asking me about sprays. People have been asking me about oils. Um, people, as I said, have been asking they're chewable. I mean, there's so many different things that are out there. I think what it comes back to is, first and foremost, evalu that evaluation. What is it that the person needs? Um, and then second of all, within that evaluation and within another evaluation that I have um, on my site, which is your overall supplement evaluation, when I look at supplements, it's really going to be about what else are you getting in? And so when I make a recommendation, sometimes we don't want another tablet or a capsule. And I talk, I, I come back to one of the game changing uh, you know, I, I talk about Natural Vitality's Calm as a game changer for me personally. This was long before I ever collaborated with the company. And a big part of that was that it was in powdered and I made it into a nice little um, cocktail, mocktail that I have before bed. Um, and, you know, when I say before bed, it's about two hours before. I think the ability there to also get it in with a glass of water um, and a nice thing, especially when I'm working with my patients on weight loss or weight management, is also that because it's a little bit sweet, unless you're doing the unflavored and you can do the unflavored with a, uh, an herbal tea or you can sweeten something yourself. Um, the nice part about that is that you're going to get, um, and it's sweetened with stevia, you're going to get, uh, it, it can cut off, you know, the other late night snacking, which is actually really important for your digestion. So hard for me to make a specific recommendation in that way, but I'm, a, I'm going to come back to, I like the powdered form. I really like the magnesium citrate. I like to make sure that there are no other funky binders and ingredients in there that are not going to, that are going to be working at cross purposes with what I'm trying to achieve. Great. I think we have time for one more quick question. Um, so what's a good recommended daily magnesium dose of magnesium for adults and for kids? Great. 
So right now, I would I start most of my patients off. I just follow the recommendation on um, uh, on the natural calm and or the cal the calm with calcium on the product, um, and that is the two teaspoons. And you know, as I said, there's some, if you're nervous with starting it, start with one teaspoon. That's a great recommendation across the board, and that recommendation is for adults. For kids, I have, and remember, kids is a very big spectrum, and I also, with kids, we want to know what we're using it for, um, but I have gone anywhere with kids from half of a teaspoon to one teaspoon. It depends on their size. It also depends, again, on what we're using it for. One of the things that I've done with kids also is that I'll just mix half of a teaspoon into, um, and I've noticed kids really like the flavor, again, like the raspberry lemon and some of that. They feel like they're having an enjoyable, um, their water tastes better, so I do that uh, in the morning and then I'll do that um, like after school or early evening time and split the dose. The new Kids Calm actually has a dosage on there, so you can follow that dosage. But um, And then the final piece would be with the travel pack, I would just use one travel, one packet, although I know personally when I travel across country that I use two packets. Um, but with starting out with travel, I always think it's a great idea to just use one packet. Okay, thank you, Ashley. Um, unfortunately, our time is up. Um, if you would like to get the link to the webinar, um, you can either email me at uh, the email address on your registration confirmation or um, the webinar will be up on Ashley's YouTube channel early next week where you'll be able to, to get the link. Once again, I'd like to thank Natural Vitality for hosting today's webinar and Ashley Kofardi and thank you all for joining.